How's it going everybody? This is Sketch Monkey here. Welcome back to this sketch channel. Today we're gonna have some fun. Keep it very, very loose. Not put any pressure on our sketching. What we're going to do is uh, from a recommendation or a comment on the previous video, which is this one right here, when we sketch wheels or we sketch the ellipses, we turn them into wheels and then we turn the wheels into cars. So what we're gonna do now in this video is uh, sketch different types of cars. The thing is, I uh, usually prefer to, or I automatically lean towards sketching sports cars, and I think that has to do with just the beauty of a two-door sports car, specifically if you have a big long hood in the front, the traditional two-door greenhouse, you know, back into the uh, the uh, short overhang and the, the the tail it just the beautiful proportions in general so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna challenge ourselves and uh, sketch different types of cars so for example let's make a wagon i haven't sketched a wagon in such a long time <clears throat> and uh, also we're gonna sketch an suv maybe we can make a convertible i'm just setting myself up for some pressure right now because <laughs> it's been so long since i sketched these types of vehicles but you know what's the point? You gotta push yourself sometimes. So let's get started here. All right, let's start with a uh, <clears throat> let's start with a uh, wagon. Let's just freehand. I got no references or nothing right now. Uh, just gonna have some fun and see what comes out. First, I like to do everything in side views. That's uh, a very simple reason for that, and it is about the proportions and see the proportions immediately when you start sketching. Uh, the best way to do that is, of course, to sketch it in side view like this. You get a good overview of what it is you're sketching uh, pretty quickly. And then from here, once you find the proportions and once you find the shape that suits you and that you're happy with, then you can take the side view and try to come up with some cool uh, views in perspective and so on. But it's always important to get it right first in side view. So I think this video, I'm not gonna do too much craziness in this video. I'm gonna break the videos up, I don't wanna put too much uh, at once into the videos because that might confuse anybody that's trying to learn. So what I'm going to do today is focus on the side views here of these different shapes and then in another video we can go ahead and sketch stuff like this in, uh, in perspective if uh, that's something that you want to see of course. So what do we do? What what am I doing here? I I'm gonna try to explain as I sketch what's going on in my in my in my head. So uh, if I was to just start from scratch, like I have never sketched a car before, uh, I think a wagon would be a pretty good uh, good uh, base to start with as a really beginner sketcher sketcher because you have just one line like this and then i like to if you see my videos before i like to just box stuff in like this so we have the hood here and then we have the main body of the car which is probably about double or a little more than double the length of the hood right here and then from here you start to sculpt your your car and you start to really design your car like this uh, to get it to get it somewhat correct in, in uh, proportions. And I, as you can see, I think we need to extend the roof line even longer than that. And then just box it, start by boxing it like this. And don't worry about curvatures and the smooth lines and you know any, any styling at this point. What you wanna do right here is to just get the proportions right first. That's the most important thing because if you don't have the proportions right, you can already say goodbye to the sketch because you can't fix uh, you can't fix the proportions once you're starting to to stylize or, or design the car. If the proportions are off, they're always going to be off, and there's always going to be something that looks kind of weird with the sketch. Uh, so this is anyway how I would start sketching a uh, 
if I was just starting out sketching and I uh, wanted to start with a wagon like this, maybe a Volvo V70 or something, then we put out the wheels right here. And I'm not gonna go in to, so if you expect me to go into theoretical sketching, that is not what I do at all. I try to build up the the feeling for shapes and the feeling for uh, proportions and geometries and get that right rather than having a very uh, uh, theoretical approach to to sketching I, I like to just sketch with uh, free hand and just have fun and uh, adjust as I go I don't like to set up grid lines and perspective lines and all that boring stuff i'm honestly too impatient for that so as you can see right now i noticed that the wheels were too small for this type of volume so we wanted to extend that a little bit before we go in and just continue with the sketching and the styling of this car whatever car this is it is a wagon of course and then we can start to, we can make some front profile for this type of car right there. I want to have it be horizontal like this, so make it modern. Maybe a, a little uh, lip down there. Maybe this is like the sport package of whatever car we're sketching. Something like that. I always like to put out the far side wheels, even though it is in perspective. And we can even shade them a little bit like this, just to get some depth in there and it is quite a strange looking wagon here let's see what is wrong with this proportion so now i'm gonna go in here and uh, do what i was talking about earlier which is adjust the proportions as we go along here so i think we need to raise this roof line up just a little bit like this and then just have a dip something like that just add some more movement to the shape or more Curb a little bit of more curvature to the roof line and also same thing here Let's just raise up this hood a little bit and create this dip that we have on Real cars if you look at them from the side view you Can add maybe Have some visual representation of a grill and a headlight in the front here Something like that and then we can create the shoulder line. It's gonna be a typical traditional nice easy shoulder line right here let's make some rear lights as well maybe have them uh, uh, work with the front lights as well so something similar like that maybe have it be taller a little bit that's usually what uh, what they are uh, if you have narrow shoulder narrow headlights you usually have a little bit of a taller graphic design on the rear lights uh, that's totally up to you, of course, how you want to design your your graphics on on your car. But this is how I would start to sketch a uh, just a uh, a wagon here. And we do need more wagons in the states, that's for sure. Everybody loves SUVs. I don't get it. Wagons are so much more fun. You still have the space for whatever luggage you need to fit in the rear here, but you don't have to drag around on a house to uh, get where you're going and ruin the driving experience, you can still have some fun if you just if you just open up to this type of shape, which is the wagon shape. It's huge in, I think, everywhere else except in the US. I don't get it. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day the, the Americans will open up to wagons. We are getting the RS6. Uh, coming over here, which is the Avant, which is Audi's wagon version. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I think that might maybe change the way Americans looks look at wagons uh, and uh, open up for more perform high performance wagons because they're so cool. It's like usability and performance all in one, and you don't have to choose one or the other. It's perfect match in my opinion I wish Volvo did some more <clears throat> high performance wagons the design is clean for a Volvo is the v90 I love the design it's just they're kind of 
I mean, they're Swedish, so I get it. It's in the Swedish DNA to be safe and to stay within your uh, lane or whatever. It's kind of in the Swedish DNA to be like that. But I think, I think uh, Volvo would actually benefit from having a little bit more of a performance attitude in their cars. Having some issues with this rim here, trying to get the... It's, it's hard to do something. I can't do two things at the same time, which you probably <laughs> realize when you're watching these videos and I talk. Uh, sometimes the sketches gets all messed up and um, when I'm quiet and I think about what I'm doing, then I usually gets a lot better. But this is a weird looking wagon. I think we could probably stop the uh, glass somewhere around here and uh, maybe have this be black or something like that so we can continue and do that maybe up here and see how this turns out make this turn this into a different type of wagon with a line that goes up up this way instead of like we have here cut that way looks pretty cool actually just gonna create a very very scandinavian shoulder line here where Absolutely nothing goes on. It's just a straight line uh, and then have the front B we gotta have it horizontal in the bottom there. Otherwise, it's gonna look like an off-roader. We don't want that Maybe we can have a uh, some sort of Koenigsegg window that wraps around here to the other side without a visible a pillar That's an idea. I mean we could have it like that If we want to that's the that's the beauty of sketching. You can do whatever the heck you like. And if you make a mistake, guess what? All you gotta do is just start over. Even if it's uh, even better when it's digital. All you gotta do is just hit the control Z and you're all good to redo whatever mistake you just did. So I'm just gonna put out some lights here. Maybe some Volvo looking stuff. Not sure what that is. Uh, how I am going to explain that to the executives. They're gonna ask me about this little dip here. I don't have any explanation for it, so sorry. It's not gonna be built, I guess. It's all good. And another thing I like to do on all my sketches is to have a solid Solid baseline here. So let's see if we can do this now. Let's just shrink this uh, Let's see how we do that It's gonna be something like that we can shrink it and then Let's start sketching an SUV and see how that is going to turn out inside view Of course, we're gonna start in the, the exact same way here with just a baseline Put up the wheels the wheelbase now though is probably going to be a little bit shorter than what we have here if you want to have a Jeep style SUV of course it depends if you want to have four doors or or only two doors but let's make some medium medium size SUV here so we have the wheelbase something something like that it's fine we can work with this I think and then of course the base here needs to be a lot higher than on a uh, regular car because we have a higher ride height obviously and SUVs want to have the rugged look so let's just square off the uh, fenders of the of the of the or the wheelhouse something like this and then let's create the boxes again here just like we did on the first sketch let's create some boxes something like this and uh, a pillar starts probably a little bit behind from the 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 wheel here and then we're gonna stretch that all the way back maybe have a dip like a hummer dip in the back something like this <clears throat> and then just cut it off and have very short overhangs front and back and from here now we are ready to go in and start to stylize this sketch that we're working on and come up with some cool ideas or styling features that we want to add. Maybe make the wheels a little bit bigger. 
rugged off-road wheels are not easy to sketch because you got to go in and do all these squiggly things to them to not make them look like slicks because that just doesn't make sense on an off-roader like this but uh, same thing here I'm just adding a baseline to the car to have to have it planted something like that and then we need to think about the how we want the greenhouse to look here since it's an off-roader maybe uh, have it something like this not sure very old-school looking off-roader this with a visible clearly visible bumper in the back we can do the same in the front actually so we have some continuity in the design and uh, not sure about the the shoulder line here where it's actually going to go because it should connect to some graphic feature here in the rear I think we can probably make it look like we have some thickness here or we have an edge here so we see this is the rear here it goes something like this we can just add some uh, tail light to this something like that and then we can do the same here in the front just raise the nose a little bit uh, the I mean the the hood and then we can create some sort of front for this car as well and uh, let's beef up the fenders a little bit I think they look too weak for this type of vehicle so you can just have some fun sketch some rugged looking fenders onto this something like that create the shoulder line here as well or the reflections which basically are always going to look the same in a car uh, as long as it's not a Lexus I would say because Lexus has all kinds of squiggly intersections here that goes into this so but if you just have a regular looking car with a f almost flat a little uh, curvature to the side this is what the horizon line is going to look like and uh, it's going to be reflected like this so this part in here between these lines are going to be darker than uh, the rest of the car and then you have the shoulder line which is this line right here so if you were to use markers now for example the shoulder line is facing up and that means of course that it's facing the sky and the sky is our light source so that means that that part is going to be lighter than the horizon that is reflected here so this part right here let's put a one here and a two here Number one is going to be lighter than number two, obviously. And then if you have uh, something that is uh, facing up down here in the bottom, you kind of want to have that because that just gives it a visual representation of where the car ends, where the body of the car ends. And it looks good. It looks good if you have this little wing here, shelf, that uh, that is also the same uh, angle as the shoulder line. So this is going to be light surface number one and then two and then surface number one here again if that makes sense uh, it's just more for the dynamic it's just basically just for the dynamic values of the of the designs if that makes sense if it doesn't make sense just comment below and I'll be more than happy to try and explain myself further I don't know how well I explain things really it's just trying to say exactly what I th what I'm thinking uh, since I'm not gonna edit this too much, it's just gonna come out as whatever. Uh, it could be some very weird stuff. I don't know if it makes sense at all. So the only judge for that is of course you. So if you if you uh, want me to explain something f in more detail, <clears throat> all you gotta do is just let me know in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to uh, try to define my rambling a little bit more, if that makes sense. Uh, final touch here, I just want to add some some line weight to these things right here. Line weights, I've talked a lot about line weight in my videos before. And there's a reason for that, it's a good reason for that. Because line weight gives your car life, it gives your, your, your sketches, whatever you're sketching. It gives it uh, depth, and it gives it some definition especially if you're not using markers 
and you're only using what I'm doing right now, a single brush, uh, pressurized pen like this, like that one. It's very easy to to get the to get the sketches to look very sh shallow and uh, not so appealing. They they look flat basically. There's nothing, no life to it. So what you want to do? Think about the light source coming from here. This is where the light is. Uh, this is the sun up here. So all the edges that are facing away from this sun that are kind of hiding from the sun or the light source going to have a thicker, a, a, a larger thickness to them. And that's, that just makes sense because they're in the shade. So you want to think about stuff like that when you're sketching too. It's not just getting the perspective right and the proportions right. That's kind of the step number one. Once you have that right, it's time to start thinking about line weight and uh, other cool stuff like that. Small details that are only going to add to your ability to, in the end, visualize what it is you want to visualize. Because that's a very important task for any designer to, to do. Now this turned out to be uh, a bit of a rugged, almost military style off-roader here. It looks pretty all right. I mean, it doesn't. It's not a beauty. It's not going to win any beauty contests, that's for sure. But to me, it looks pretty cool still. I kind of want to sketch another one that doesn't look this military style, though. So let's see if we can do that. Just one more. Let's put this. Uh, up there is fine. Let's delete this cute little sun up there. <clears throat> and uh, where should we put it? Let's just put it down here. So let's see if we can make some more more dynamic looking uh, SUV here down here. So as you can see, I'm not sketching using boxes anymore. I think that's only useful when you start out. That's the only you know, time I would kind of suggest it to you. Once you get used to it, you're gonna start to wanna experiment more with with just li flowing lines like this. And this is this is when it gets fun to sketch, in my opinion. This is when you can really start to explore your uh, creativity and uh, have fun with your with your lines. So that's a very, very quick sh design and shape that we can play around with here. Maybe we can have uh, a shoulder line that goes something like that from this part. And then we can have it maybe intersect something like this. Create the A pillar, go into a sloping C pillar right there. And this would be a typical, you know, cruise around town SUV is never going to go in the dirt or anything like that it's just for uh, the the soccer moms to feel safe when they cruise around in 30 miles per hour uh, to Walmart or whatever and this is that type of SUV compared to the military style that we did up there with the boxes this is a lot different which I'm sure you can see but uh, to me this is also a lot more uh, it's it's more fun. It's just, uh, just simply more fun to sketch using this style when you get really comfortable with sketches, and when you when you uh, don't have to think about proportions too much. Get that right. It just comes natural, and that that's the thing. That's the uh, that's the thing that takes. Um, it doesn't matter how much or intense you practice. This is things. This is where what comes with just years of practice. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think there is a a any any shortcut to this. I wish there was. Uh, for example, the courses that my course is kind of a shortcut. My sketching course is kind of a shortcut to getting to this place. Uh, where you feel very uh, natural in your lines and in your sketching, but it's not. Uh, it, it's it's a shortcut cut in the way that I show you what exercises you can do to get to this place faster. But that doesn't mean that you're not gonna have to put in years of work uh, to 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 get to uh, a place where you're super comfortable sketching, unless you're a like ridiculous, uh, unnatural 
world has never seen talent that can grasp this in like a month or so. That would be a first for me to see. But you know, I've been sketching since uh, since uh, since I was since I was two or three. I mean, as soon as long as I can remember, and I've been sketching cars since at least uh, I would say twenty years. So. And my first sketches did not look good. I mean, I, I have a video somewhere <laughs> showing how my first sketches, what they look like. And, uh, it, you know, I'm glad I have those sketches because it, it really it really shows that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not the best sketcher now, but I, I can definitely see that uh, the improvement by looking at my old sketches and that's I think super valuable and it's also fun to see like I remember looking at some of those sketches and thinking like wow at the time when I was sketching it <clears throat> I was thinking like wow this is a sick looking sketch I'm gonna send this to Mercedes and they are going to hire me right on the spot no doubt because this is such an awesome sketch uh, no one has come up with this idea before and this line right here and then I look at that same sketch today and I was thinking like geez what what were you thinking <laughs> like it's such a different way of looking at things nowadays but that uh, that's also makes it fun to look back at sketches like that so I would really encourage you to save all your work like you're that you're doing right now to just just for the simple reason so you can have them available to like back on once you're once you're sitting there in Munich or Stuttgart at Mercedes or Munich BMW and you're sketching the next BMW M4 without the massive kidneys and then you can look back at the uh, early sketches that you did and think about how far you've come it's a very cool thing to do it's easy to forget how far you've come when you're always chasing the next thing so always keep a journal of everything you do your sketches and just your 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 small wins celebrate every small win that you have it's very important to not get uh, discouraged and burnt out i think when you get burnt out when you're working for something that you're not passionate about and uh, when you when you think you're not making progress even though you probably are making huge steps forward without you even Noticing it. Anyway, I hope this sheet of paper here with this cool. It was fun. It was fun, but I want to focus in on on a few things here. You can see that the first sketch up there uh, and the last one, those are the sketches that I did not use the box method to sketch. And you can see the outcome, for example, of so this is uh, this is uh, let's call this free sketching, and this is also free sketching down here. This is box and this is box down here too. Oh, this, these two middle ones. Now you can see the dynamic and the, 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 the boxiness, they look okay, but they're lacking some emotion in their sketches, right? I think you can see that. They look too stale. The, the proportions are not really there. And this is how you start out sketching. So even if I go back to this, as you can see, even if I go back to this box method here, my sketches are still gonna look pretty terrible compared to when I sketch freehand and really let go and just have fun with the designs. And I think that's an important lesson to, to really try not to, uh, not to limit yourself too much in your sketching and just let the hand flow and let it flow, make a side view and then you come up with the next side view and the next one and the next one and then you just have fun and continue to to evolve that way without taking your sketches too seriously. Thanks for watching as always, and if you enjoy this kind of content, please let me know by subscribing, and of course, comment below what type of uh, sketches or videos like this you wanna see in the future, because I really enjoy these type of sketches on my other, other channel, if you're subscribed there. I do a bunch of redesigns and stuff, of course, but I really now understand how much I miss sketching stuff like this. So let me know what type of uh, tutorials, sketches, products, whatever you want to see in the future. Analog sketching, I have a bunch of that, or digital. Just let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. 
Take care and I'll see you in the next video.